These were living quarters, sleeping quarters. The troops that lived here lost everything. There was very little, if anything, that was salvageable because there was also a fire that ended up raging here for a few hours after the missile uh, impacted in this particular area. The reason why no one was killed, not here, not in any of the other locations of impact, is because there was advanced warning. We don't know what, we don't know how. That is very sensitive information. But we are told that hours before the attack even began, they knew something was happening. They just did not know specifically what it was going to be. So precautions were taken. By 11 p.m., troops who could hunker down were hunkered down in bunkers. Some of them in Saddam era bunkers. Others who had to man their posts because of the security situation. They were still out there. And then the strikes began at about 1.34 in the morning. This is the crater left behind by one of them. There are so many stories that we're hearing of heroics, so many stories that we're hearing of really extraordinary close calls. Those who lived through this say that it's clear that Iran wasn't that concerned with trying to save uh, U.S. lives. A lot of these impacts did happen in places where they could potentially have caused significant U.S. Uh, casualties. And this is uh, Lieutenant Colonel Stacy Coleman. We've been speaking all day. And I mean, you were telling us what was that night like? How do you even begin to describe it? It's very hard to describe it. I will tell you it was uh, extremely scary. Um, some of my team and myself were hunkered down in one of those bunkers. And when the first wave started he hitting, you could feel the shock wave. And even inside the bunker, the pressure was so strong that we watched our bunker doors sink in towards the inside of the bunker and then escape back out. Um, about seven of the uh, impacts were in very close proximity to where we were hunkered down. And it, like I said, you could feel every last one of the shock waves. It was extremely scary. And very lucky, or was it the training, the precautions that were taken, that there were no U.S. casualties? I'd say it was all of that. I'd say it was a combination of uh, God looking out for us. It was a combination of, you know, the little bit of intel and advance warning that we got. And then it was the smart commanders on the ground making on-spot decisions to get people out of harm's way. And how do you begin to describe, I mean, what this was like, and then, of course, what kind of security precautions you're having to take now, given the situation? Um, this 